Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford, MUAC Productions, and this is a demonstration of a mock-up operating system I've created in the past month. So later on in this summer, I'm hoping to um, start creating a larger, more long-term game project. And part of what I want that game to be able to do is have an auto-update feature so that you can um, start up the game and then it will check online to see if there's an update available. If there is one, um, it will download and then install it and then allow you to play without interrupting the game at all. So this mini project called OSQ is a little demonstration of trying to implement that in a Blender game. So um, first of all, OSQ um, OS as an operating system and then Q was a nickname I had a couple years back. So if I open this now, it will start to load. We'll see the uh, splash up screen that was my old uh, the duck out icon. And then we'll have welcome to OSQ, a program that is automatically opened at the beginning. Program in quotation marks, of course. This is just a little um, bit of text saying what this is. Um, it's an operating system, blah, blah, game upload, blah, blah. So here it um, has identified that it's running OSQ version 1.0. If I press next again, um, it will have working buttons that will actually open um, web pages on your actual operating system. So right here it's opened my DeviantArt page. And then it also links to the thread of which um, this is posted on um, Blender Artist. So this would be useful inside a game, um, you know, to say, oh, read on some more stuff or look at the development behind the scenes, whatever, by just opening this. That's using the web browser um, module in Python. I just close this. So the general interface is sort of like a sidebar. I click on this, it opens. You know the list of programs here. I have a couple simple ones um, like Image View. Um, it only has one image at the time because I can be bothered to program more. Um, I have a really simple text editor here. Hello world, of course. Um, I have <laughs> um, a mostly functional calculator. You can do some simple things. Uh, you know, it's a little easy to break, but uh, see what happens. And yeah, it just kind of goes ert, then gets stuck. But uh, the main purpose, of course, is for the update feature. So. Um, first of all, let me just turn off my Wi-Fi. Um, so what this this is um, the part where it's going to be checking for an update online. So the first thing it does is it checks the internet connection. Connection fail, of course. Um, I realized the internet was not connected. Although I can still use this web browser module to open the page um, where I can manually download the stuff. And it will open the web browser. And even though the internet's not connected, the page will actually be up there. So um, if I turn the internet back on, okay, so it's working now. Okay, close, open, check connection, and yes, connection is valid, check for update. So now, um, although you didn't see it actually happen there, what it did was that it connected to a Google server to check that it was able to connect. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's just a really quick server of quick response time to see if it's actually working. Then it is after that, um, what I just clicked is it shifted through um, the Blender Artist web page to see if there's an update available. It says, yes, there is an update available, version 1.1. So if I were to say, remind me later, it opens this like as a you know reminder. I can open this again, check, update, yes, update now. So if I click this, it goes to the update screen. And it actually tells you what it is doing at that time. So it downloaded, so now it's organizing the files, and now it's getting ready to restart the new version of the operating system. I was lazy, so the only thing that changed are the textures. But it actually did just, in real time, download these textures from a um, compressed tar file on um, Mediafire that I've uploaded. And so it's saying, okay, yeah, this is the same message, but it now is recognized as version 1.1 now. And again, these buttons all still work and whatnot. But now everything looks fancier, you know. Um, a new image for the image editor, although I still only have one. <laughs> um, the calculator looks a little bit nicer, you know. Six. See if that, yeah, alright, whatever. 
And then if we were to open update again, check for update, okay, connection valid, and is this still running? There we go. No current update. So it's again checked on the um, the web page to see that this was the last update available. But I have included a button to revert. So if I do this, it will do the opposite, go back to version 1.0. So click that. It's update it says it's reverting. It's downloading the old version of the texture files, organizing the files, deleting the old ones, moving the new ones. And now it will start up the OS again, flash screen, and then we're back to this. So that is in a nutshell OSQ. And close. All right, now that you've seen a little bit of the demo of the program, I'll go a little bit more into how it actually works. So the main feature, I suppose, is that it is using a web page as the pointer for everything. So this is the um, Blender Artist web page where I've posted the project. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, here it will extract the URL and version number. So what I do is using um, the Python URL library or URL lib dot request. I'm able to open a web page and save a text version of its context to a file, which is what this is. Um, technically, it's a binary file, but um, <coughs> if I just read it as a normal text file, that doesn't even matter. So in here is the mess of um, HTML or whatever it is, um, where somewhere within I have my little list of URL and version numbers, which is why I have done this just four slashes in a row so that way when I open this file I can just do control find slash 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 and there it is this is the same well an older version like I, I downloaded this a while ago an older version of this right here and so from that using Python's um, text dot split and then um, having this in here um, you're able to shift through an entire website and like split text out that way. And so I basically turn this into a list. The first um, item of the list is the version number, and then the following will be the corresponding URL. Then the next one's going to be um, an OS version again, and the next one is the URL corresponding to that, which is a um, the actual file on um, the server. So if I go to... Um, Media, fire, come. Um, just go to some random OSQ. So, for example, this is the version 1.1 textures. Um, I can't just link this page because, of course, this is the page where you the user goes and clicks download. So what I have to do is I have to right-click this, copy link address. If you look at this, you can see it's a bunch of numbers and letters. Um, this tells me that it's a server that it is connected to. So it is possible that over time, this URL will change. And that is exactly what would happen. The server that the file was hosted on, I found in some cases changed between the time that the update was checked for and it was actually attempted to download. So you would often get redirected to some error page, which was only a few kilobytes in size, which would cause obviously the whole thing to fail. So I've actually already created a update to fix this. And what I've done is um, done extra shifting through of a web page. So now, if I go back to the, um, the thread where it extracts the URL in the first place, this, so let's say we're on the first version of the OS, it's checking for version 1.1. It will now have this pointer of a URL, which is actually linked to the user interface page. This URL, as I said, does not change. So I've defined a function here called Mediafire that will then take that URL here and um, also given an output save file, it will then shift through that loaded page to um, find the correct URL that is the actual file. So here we're just opening the page, the um, interface page, reading through a decoding so that it can be used as a string to be parsed as it does here. And so here you see that I have um, split the entire string um, based on HTTP. So basically, I have um, a list where each element is um, split by um, a URL. 
And so the next line, as it turns out, the 61st item, well, I guess technically the 62nd since zero is the first one. So that number in the list corresponds to the URL that I would get if I were to write, ooh, well, if I had right clicked or just clicked to actually download. It's the URL, the actual file in this case. So it procedurally sort of gets us each time. And then it just adds in the um, HTTP again and then does the uh, request and download. So I, what basically this means is that there's only really two ways the script can now fail. Um, one way, and the most obvious way, is that if Mediafire changes their layout at all, like if they add, because obviously I'm checking for, you know, a very explicit number of a URL, and so if they change their layout of the um, page at all, or the URL appears one earlier, one later, then it will download something completely irrelevant that it cannot unzip or untar later. The other thing that I have seen happen only once or twice, but it could happen, is uh, the spam filter, which I suppose is built to stop programs like this from mass downloading. Um, I found, um, I think I'm, yeah. <laughs> so every once in a while, yeah, they're on to me. Every once in a while I found that it would download um, this like 60 kilobyte file, and when the program shifted through that, the uh, 61st URL was actually a link to their uh, Twitter account. Basically, that was the um, box saying, you know, prove your computer by typing in the uh, letters that you see in the image at right, which, of course, my program was not doing. It was just trying to download a file. So occasionally that happens, and, you know. But it, otherwise, the script is pretty much sound. And this is all just a problem of not having uh, my own server. So... Obviously, the downloading process itself is sound, given you have an internet connection. So that's the definition for the media fire. Um, obviously, I could add, you know, quote unquote, support for other media hosters if um, anyone wanted later on. Um, just redefining, like, you know, which number string it is and blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, this I can also update. If they do change it, it's just changing this number around or whatever and whatnot. So, um,. After that point, um, I mean, this is the um, update script, so that screen that has the black um, and white progress bar. Um, a lot of it's just like moving stuff around, deleting files. Um, here I've defined the functions for um, uncompressing the file it downloads. Um, I started using unzip, which worked on every OS and every instance of Bonder except the one on Mac OS X. I never got to the root of the problem, but even though it would run like, if I just ran it right here, um, it would work fine, but inside the Blender game engine, on the Mac version, or at least the one I was running, it would not work, so I took a step back and then started rewriting it for untar, and so now I've started using tar files for the compression. Um, this here is a big no-no, technically, extract all. Um, here I've replaced it with some sort of um, for loop. And which is what I should ultimately do here because extract all, it's the idea is that you can extract anything you don't know where it's being placed, even though you sort of, it's a little bit sketch, but for this case, since I know exactly what I'm downloading, it's fine. But later on, I'll probably, um, you know, change it. But otherwise, that is the basics of the update. Um, so as you can see, you just import url lib dot request in that format because as it turns out the url library isn't a file like other modules it's actually a folder if you go over here so yeah here instead of being a file like this it's a folder so if you want the url dot request you actually have to type it in like this that took me a while to figure out i couldn't just do you know import url lib and then over here call url lib dot request and then you still have to retype and everything so the only other um, problem that this method lends itself to is um, download times, I guess, and lack of response. So obviously, if you run this script, Blender will just freeze until the, um, the script has finished, as in until it's finished downloading the file. Um, for small files like um, these textures where it's not too much of a problem, but you still have a bit of a pause there, but for larger files like entire blends, blend files, then the program will obviously freeze for a while. And that's because it can't, you know, update the frame until 
um, until the script is finished. So I've done a little bit of digging. Um, this is the Python file that defines um, request module under URL library. And if I recall, the, um, the part that actually downloads the file in pieces is this little while loop right here. So this is under another definition called request. And it's basically downloading um, one kilobyte chunks of the file and then writing it to an actual file. Because if you think about it, if you just um, read the entire file that you're downloading in one bit, all of that would have to be stored in memory and then written to the file. That would create a lot of um, lag and slow everything down horribly. So this actually very conveniently splits it up in bits, which means also that I have the potential to... <laughs> Apparently, I've already actually edited the script, trying to find that out. Um, I could put at the end here, you know, um, print, I don't know, whatever. Basically, I could have a part where it exports or somehow tells um, Blender that you've done this amount of the download, which means I could theoretically update a progress bar. Um, the problem with that is still that this is a while loop. So there's no way that I know that you can update the Blender screen mid-frame or mid-Python um, script. So if I were still wanted to make that work, I would have to actually rerun this script, you know, pause the script mid-download to refresh the frame, then start the script again, which would mean importing the whole thing again. And it gets kind of sketched, but theoretically it would be possible to have a dynamic progress bar. Otherwise, the person's just sitting there not knowing if it's actually properly downloading or not. You assume it is. Yeah, it's, it's a bit sketch. So yeah, that's the basics of how I set this up. It's not really a tutorial, but like enough that you can maybe get something working for your own. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and look out for future updates and what I'm doing with the game engine. This, again, was all a project that was supposed to sort of prepare myself for an upcoming game project that I've begun working on, actually. And so, ultimately, since I want to make this as streamlined for myself in the update process, I'm going to actually eventually make a sort of systematic way to implement it and to um, run and upkeep the uh, update system, which I will then share for everyone to use if they so desire in their own games. So, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Muak.